We recently covered the ongoing debate regarding the true age of the Great Sphinx and the recent controversy found in the geological evidence, which indicates that the monument, long taught to be a mere 3,000 years old, is, in reality, as much as 800,000 years. This evidence is based on erosion patterns and their shared characteristics with coastal erosion patterns. Additionally, we also covered the remarkable discovery of a possible second sphinx found a short distance away. However, what we didn't cover was the anomalies that can be discovered regarding the continued mainstream posit of the sphinx experiencing modern manipulation, and the possibility that the face now found upon the sphinx was a much later, even possibly modern addition, now concealing the true identity of the sphinx. We have touched upon the rather amateurish stone cuts that are visible around the Sphinx's headwear in the past, along with its ears and many other interesting yet largely unknown and we feel academically ignored features found all over the Sphinx's face and head. From the neck down, the Sphinx still shows its age in all its glory, not only a match to the far more eroded, now unrecognizable second monument found a short distance away. The question is if mainstream academics or those bestowed with the responsibility of protecting the Sphinx were not aware of the controversy in regard to the Sphinx's true identity all these years ago, then why did they do these works? Why did they clearly implement great efforts, and clandestine at that, if they were not aware of its fragile and seemingly hung existence, hung off a far older relic, not only hiding its true age, but continually pushed as the authentic original appearance of this great monument. Not only is our evidence mounting in regard to the true age of the Great Pyramids, and possibly for this exact reason, the numerous additional works clearly made by later yet also advanced ancient now lost civilizations are now visible to all who visit these monuments. But it seems that the cracks are also beginning to form, thankfully only within the modern paradigms, in regard to the true identity and true age of the Sphinx as well. Who built the Great Sphinx? Who added the head we see today, one now synonymous with the plateau? Why were manipulations done to the head, clearly to preserve it, yet in complete secret? We find our research and the mounting evidence supporting our posits highly compelling. What's behind the Sphinx's ear? Hidden in plain sight for many a millennia, there is clearly a blocking stone still in place. A blocking stone we would never have noticed if it weren't for a rather unusual source of information. Recently, we covered the amazing story of Kipri Yanovich Boriska, the extraordinarily intelligent boy from Russia that, from a young age, has supposedly been able to remember a past life a life as a pilot upon the once flourishing planet Mars, destroyed during a catastrophic war. What is extraordinary regarding this claim, however, is the remarkable information that Boriska has somehow been able to share from a very young age, information which has taken astronomers many years to realize. According to Boriska, life on Earth will change irrevocably when the Great Sphinx is unlocked using a mysterious mechanism behind one of its ears. Unfortunately, he has not given any further details about what exactly the opening of the Sphinx will do, though this was enough for us to notice the anomaly resting upon this very ancient monument. Boriska has unfortunately since disappeared. However, while in the public eye, he claimed that he was a reincarnated soldier placed here upon Earth to avert the same destructive fate as Mars, claiming that many of his kind exist upon the Earth, calling them indigo children, often stating all of this while in a trance. Which is highly compelling, as he is not the only one who once prophesied very similar astonishing developments that would, one day, arise surrounding the Great Sphinx. Edgar Case, an American Christian mystic, would often answer questions on subjects such as healing, reincarnation, wars, Atlantis, and future events also while in a trance. Was Case also an indigo child? Graham Hancock is another figure who has publicly claimed that there are many mysteries still left to be unraveled surrounding the Sphinx, 
specifically, that a time capsule is hidden within the Sphinx, a capsule that we will only discover as a species once we are intellectually capable of absorbing its message. When it was shared within the mainstream media recently that an enormous cavity had indeed been quietly discovered within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The largest of the Great Pyramids, the only one with tunnels constructed within its inside, and additionally, the only one which is, in fact, eight-sided. The reaction by the Egyptian Antiquities Authorities was very revealing of their attitude towards secrets being revealed to the public. Not only were the claims made from reliable sources, but they are also backed up by extensive research projects and, indeed, its resulting evidential data. However, this has not deterred Professor Zawi Hawass from publicly denying any such cavity's very existence, shrugging off all claims and accompanying research as, quote, lies and hearsay. With such enormous hurdles in place, prepared to stifle any such discoveries from going public, it is inevitably going to be an uphill battle to expose the truth regarding the Great Sphinx of Giza. The Queen's Chamber, which lays within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, more commonly known as Cheops, has astonished, shocked, and mystified Egyptologists since its mysterious existence was discovered. The intrigue into this elusive chamber, along with its mysterious adjacent shafts, comes as no surprise once one understands the anomalous characteristics of their construction. As we have already covered before, Massive cover-ups have been suspected as taking place surrounding this mysterious chamber since its discovery. Strange shaft tunnels, set at a 45-degree incline, no larger than 20 centimeters in diameter, run away from this room, and no one seems to know why. Not only would these ancient shafts require being hermetically sealed during the pyramid's construction to stop them from becoming blocked, but the excruciating effort that would have gone into making them becomes all the more of a confusing undertaking once you realize they were not even connected to the chamber, but hidden 40 centimeters away from entering the tomb within the walls, completely invisible from the inside of the burial room located deep within the structure. Cheops, noticeably being the only pyramid to have ever been constructed with such shafts, making their addition a popular mystery within Egyptian history. One leads out from the subterranean chamber, two lead out from a termination point some 40 centimeters from the wall of the so-called Queen's Chamber, or now popularly suspected to be that of an alien tomb among ancient alien specialists, and two from the King's Chamber above. Here is where our story becomes interesting. Rudolf Gantenbrick, famous for actually discovering the blocking door within one of the queen's chamber shafts, which could lead to an as yet undisclosed tomb, has also made other curious discoveries within the Great Pyramid. Discoveries which could only be explained by modern covert explorations of tunnels that were supposedly to that point unexplored. Gantenbrick's cache being but one example of these mysterious finds, deep within the tunnel systems in the royal chamber, at a 90-degree turn going vertically upwards, a pile of papers, possibly wrapped artifacts, weighed down with a small piece of timber or stone, possibly another artifact, was discovered by Gantenbrick's robot. Also, during initial location attempts to find access tunnels leading to the Queen's Chamber, several blocking stones required removal. After the removal of the seventh block, a modern-era hexagonal steel rods were discovered discarded upon the tunnel's floor. Each section of the hexagonal steel rods measures 2.7 meters in length and was fitted with a round socket which allowed them to be joined to the next section. In one of the lower shafts in 1872, Wayneman Dixon found three more objects which could be considered proof of prior covert exploration of the mysterious northern shafts. A copper grappling hook about 5 centimeters in length, accompanied by a small, gray-green stone ball and a broken-off piece of a square wooden slat or rod about 13 centimeters long, the wood would today be the most intriguing of his finds. These artifacts suspected to be remnants of the grave robber's tools, could have been carbon-dated, 
Yet this fragment is the only one of the three to now be missing out of the London Museum's collection. Unfortunately, in his writings, Dixon doesn't say in which of the two lower shafts he actually found the objects, but he mentions them in connection with a northern one. Not only did these obviously highly intelligent people leave evidence of how they must have gotten in, but also traces upon the previous untouched ancient walls of the shafts within Cheops, clearly left by their previous robotic technologies. Other square metal rods have been recovered, along with other artifacts discarded within some tunnel systems deep within the ancient structures. Meaning these guys got to the treasures way before we did. Interestingly, reported evidence of covert excavations continues to this day, heavy-duty electrical supplies discreetly running into and trailing deep into the pyramids have been noticed and photographed by some of the more astute tourists. Witnesses to the sounds of heavy machinery being used beneath the site is also frequently reported, yet rarely followed up. It seems it's not a question of whether brilliant minds have achieved the seemingly impossible in penetrating these secret layers, but more a question of how and what astonishing finds have possibly been kept concealed. Discovered in 1860, within the astounding Valley of the Kings, the Atlantis Ring has since proven to have been a most incredible of finds. Not only for the secret, sacred geometry that was found to have been inscribed upon this seemingly insignificant clay ring, but also for the strange, seemingly reoccurring pattern of curses or good luck talismans wrapped around the entire magic of this once incredible yet now lost civilization. Once discovered, it was said to cast a protective spell upon those who wore it. A supposed positive energy force that, although as strange as that of the curse of Tutankhamun, is one that is far less mentioned within the career and discoveries of Howard Carter himself. This, regardless of the fact that it has since gone on to be an incredibly popular mass-produced product, once kept secret for many years by Carter himself. Also now sold under the claim that it does indeed emit a powerful energy field around the wearer. The science behind these claims we cannot claim to understand. However, the ring's modern popularity, along with the lack of coverage regarding this possible legend within the discussion of Howard Carter's career, we have found peculiar. Featuring two triangles, six small and three larger rectangles with a semi-cylindrical form, it was originally found by Marquis de Grain. A blueprint of the ring was soon sent to Carter himself, who made and wore a secret replica which he kept himself until his death in 1939. In 1922, Carter would discover King Tut's tomb. Before opening the tomb, hieroglyphics above the tomb's unbroken seal were read. It said, The wings of death shall touch all who violates the Pharaoh's eternal rest. Unperturbed, they opened the tomb, discovering treasures beyond all of their wildest imaginations. Yet, as warned, all who were involved in this discovery eventually met curious fates, with just Carter himself left, the one person who was undeniably the most guilty party in the entire excavation. He would not die until 17 years later, at the reasonably young age of 66. During these 17 years, however, the flurry of media attention around the claimed curse persisted. Interestingly, whenever asked how he had seemingly escaped the curse for so long, he would always reply that he had a secret talisman, a good luck charm, that protected him from the curse. This initial cast of the ring Carter had made, it turns out, he seemingly knew of its incredibly important geometric significance. Yet it was not until 1940 while going through his documents that his studies and indeed rules of wearing the ring were revealed to the world. His talisman, a replica of the Atlantis ring. A relic many thousands of years old, originally made from Eswan and clay, like something out of a Holy Grail story. It seems the least valuable, seemingly most conspicuous of finds turned out to be one of the most, if not the most valuable to Howard himself. Out of all the golden wonders he had ever unearthed, this one, one which he didn't even discover himself, he kept closest to his heart. 
It is because of this that we find the Atlantis ring highly compelling.